You've probably heard of Bitcoin and its meme-based cousin Dogecoin. Dogecoin has been making news and trending pages and r slash all for a while now, along with other assets like GME and AMC, and most recently a cryptocurrency called Cumrocket or Cummies. I'm completely serious. Dogecoin and Cumrocket have recently seen surges in their prices after explosions of discussion on particular subreddits and tweets by lithium peddlers. So what's going on? Why have these seemingly unknown assets been erupting in price, and why won't this be the last time that we see assets like them? Spam emails used to be a much larger problem than they are now. This is mostly because all of our emails, just like all of our communication, takes place within corporate spaces, and corporations that handle our email are the most computationally powerful entities in the world. They use this computing power to build models of your behavior by reading your emails and texts, and sell that to advertisers. But to make sure you don't get too upset with this, they also use some of their computing power to train models to detect and remove spam emails. One of the most common scams from the heyday of spam emails was something called the pump and dump. Yes, again, really, that's what it's called. In a pump and dump, the scammer finds some asset, typically a cheap and infrequently traded stock. Small companies which are publicly traded to attract investment but aren't on a major exchange. They're typically called penny stocks because their prices are in the pennies. The scammer will buy up a fairly large amount of this stock, but slowly. Their goal is to get as much as possible at the lowest price possible. The most important aspect of a stock for a pump and dump scam is that it is not traded a lot. Stocks of this nature will often be described as near zero volume, meaning that around zero shares of this stock are actually bought and sold on any given day. We'll come back to later why low volume stocks are important, but the other aspect is that a stock should be as cheap as possible. A 1 cent increase in the price of a 4 cent stock is a jump of 25%, while a 1 cent increase for a $40 stock is almost nothing. This means that even the smallest possible moves will have huge effects on the value of one's position, that is, the amount of stock that they hold. Once the scammer owns a large amount of stock, they will begin sending spam emails to hype up the stock. Undervalued and huge growth potential. Big contract just signed with major retailer. Amazing investment opportunity. You know, stuff like that. Sending enough of these emails will mean that eventually some people will be conned into buying the stock. The next part of the scheme requires an understanding of how stock prices are actually determined. Stock trading is done via something called a terminal. Most of them are Bloomberg terminals. Yes, that Bloomberg. Or Reuters terminals. Yes, that Reuters. The terminal shows everyone who has a terminal and owns some amount of stock and the price that they are willing to sell it for, and also everyone who wants to buy a stock and the price that they are willing to pay. Companies only issue so many publicly traded shares, so when people buy stocks, they buy them from other people instead of buying them from the company. There are only so many publicly traded shares to go around. Whenever a buyer and a seller say the same price, they will exchange the stock. Each exchange can only be for a limited number of shares though. Along with listing a price that they are willing to sell at, each seller also lists the number of shares that they're willing to sell at that price. The stock price that you see when you google the price of a stock is the price of the last sale of that stock. This is part of the reason why stock prices are so difficult to predict. The number that we see on Google is just the last price that only two people in an entire market of millions were willing to exchange at. It's not the price that everyone in the market agreed on, and anyone can offer any amount of stock for sale at any price if they so desired. A pump and dump scam takes advantage of this system for buying and selling stocks. With all of the increased hype the scammer has generated around their stock, many people will start putting in orders to buy it. There is only so much of it for sale at the current price, and that will get bought up rather quickly. As this happens, people will have to start buying shares at higher and higher prices. Some of the shares being offered at these higher prices are those originally bought by our scammer. Eventually, the scammer will have sold their entire position and be quite a bit richer. After they bought the stock, the scammer pumped it by creating a buzz around it and then dumped it as it rose in price, hence a pump and dump. The stock price was pumped up to some unrealistic level that doesn't actually reflect what informed decision makers think the value of that much of a company is. 
eventually the stock price usually returns back down to what it was before the pump and dump. What makes this different from the typical reason that a stock might increase in price is that when a normal major jump happens, it's because some new information about the company has come out. In fact, it's this type of information that a pump and dump is trying to pretend to be. Say that Target has been doing horribly for a year, and then suddenly they put out a fantastic earnings report. Previous valuations of Target stock were too low. The world is not anymore the way it used to be! Mm -mm, no, no, no! There was less information than there is now, so people will adjust the price that they're willing to sell their Target stock for. With a pump and dump, there is no new information or revaluation. It's all fake. This is where cryptocurrencies make perfect candidates for pumping and dumping. Be connect! There are no underlying earnings for cryptocurrencies, or any underlying value of any sort. And there are many of them which are traded so infrequently, and have so laughably low values, it's a pump and dump schemer's dream. Failing companies are also good candidates for pump and dump schemes, because they're cheap to buy, and also have the benefit of being at least somewhat known by the general public, adding to the believability of this claim of undervalued, or unrealized growth potential. Regardless of what the asset is, it's all the same scheme that's been done for basically all of human history. It's just recently been done with stocks on major exchanges instead of nobody penny stock exchanges. People would buy GME and AMC, and then make posts on Wall Street bets to get others to buy the stock, often being quite explicit in what they were trying to do. GameStop is one of the most compelling asymmetric opportunities in the market today. It's like the big short again, or more like the big short squeeze this time, right? Anyway, let me sh Sometimes the hype needed to pump a stock came from a famous person talking about it, like sending a tweet, often phrasing the discussion in such a way as to be legally in the clear to avoid the charges of a pump and dump, because pump and dumps are highly illegal. But pump and dumps are also now easier than ever. Every news article or expert pundit panel on the news only adds to the hype of the asset and sustains the pump. Every trending Twitter topic does the same thing, and every time someone discusses it on Reddit, it's also just fueling the fire. And now that everyone can buy and sell stocks using apps like Robinhood, it's a pump and dump scammer's dream. The fact that there were at least two pump and dump schemes going on with a cryptocurrency called Cummies is sure something to put in the history books. But the main reason that we can expect more pump and dump schemes in the future is that the regulators in charge of regulating this market, the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, are accountable to no one and the entire institution is fundamentally broken. The SEC is an independent agency whose goal is to enforce laws against market manipulation, schemes such as pump and dumps. But there is no ban on working for investment firms after working for the SEC. And in fact, many investment banks will pay people to go work at the SEC. Working at the SEC is often seen as a step in a career track for high standing positions at major investment banks. To have both understood the inner workings of all the rules and regulations in the SEC, or even written some for yourself with a specific future employer in mind, is quite the pretty package to put on your resume. So what is to be done? All of the money that the pump and dump scammer makes is taken from someone else's wallet, because in trading financial assets, no new value is created. It's just money that was taken from somewhere else. And where the money came from is usually the pockets of much poorer people, those who were conned into buying the stock, or the cryptocurrency, or whatever else it was. Well, the only real solution is to abolish capitalism. <laughs>